Hello, and welcome for this new episode of Learning with Mick. Oh, actually, welcome to this new episode of Learning with Mick and Alan. Alright, so uh, last episode we uh, talked about the pronunciation of A uh, in French. Uh, very important, but today we're going to talk about the uh, most used letter in the French language. It's E and all of its variants. Uh, there it is. So, starting with uh, E, and you can see it has uh, many different uh, variants. We're starting with uh, E, and it will have E, E. This is another variant of E. Un, on, O. X and uh, another form oh. of uh, A. So let's get started. We're going to start uh, with the basic form of uh, E, like this. And E has uh, three different uh, um, pronunciation. It can either sound like uh, E or E, but I will uh, tell you uh, the difference. Uh, so the regular E sounds like E, but then there are some exceptions. Uh, so it also sounds like E if you're using a monosyllabic uh, word, like uh, these simple French words, like uh, ce, de, me, ne, je, le, ce, te. Uh, we will have plenty of time uh, to uh, see what, <laughs> what they mean. Uh, uh, these are mostly... Uh, uh, demonstrative adjectives, uh, which we will see uh, more in details when we do the grammatics lessons. Uh, so maybe you can repeat after me, it's very simple. Uh, oh, there it is. Ce, de, me, ne, je, le, ce, de. Very simple. Um, e is uh, also. Alan, qu'est-ce que tu fais? <laughs> Working with kids. <laughs> um, e, uh, ah, there he is. <laughs> e is uh, also uh, has its own rule when it is uh, found at the end of a word. And uh, you can see it is not pronounced when it is located at the end of a word. Uh, for example, we have uh, the verb. Oh, come here. The verb boire, which means uh, to drink. <coughs> oh, bless me. Boire, or the adjective sale, which means dirty, or the noun, feminine noun, porte, means the gate. All of these words, every time there is a E at the end of the word, the E is not pronounced. So let's, uh, let's uh, say these words one more time. Boire, sale, yes. porte. Port. All right. So the e at the end of a word is never pronounced. And the third rule, uh, and uh, I wrote a lot of things here. There's a lot of things to say. Is uh, when e is uh, followed by Two consonants, when the last letter of a word is a C, F, K, L, M, and X, or X in French, and that the, there's a E uh, before these letters, or if R uh, is the last letter of a monosyllabic word, then in that case, uh, E becomes E, uh, which will be the variant we will see after. Like in the following ver uh, words that we have here, uh, ferme, mer, ver, ver, et professionnel. Uh, I will tell you what these uh, words mean, but you can see that uh, all of these uh, E here are actually pronounced E because they are either followed uh, by two consonants or they are part, like here for mer, in the, of a monosyllabic word uh, in which finishes by air, uh, or it could have been uh, a word with, uh, like for example, sec, 
uh, S E C finishes with C, and it's also E that sounds like A. It's, uh, many uh, possible uh, examples. It, it's very common uh, in French. So let's say these words one more time. Ferme. Mer. Ver. Ver. Professionnel. So, ferme uh, is a farm. You can see it's almost the same as in English. Mer is uh, the sea. Go to the beach, uh, people would say, uh, aller à la mer. Ver, written like this, means towards. You're going towards some place. Uh, ver, French. Uh, ver here sounds just the same, but you can see the spelling different. Uh, this is glass. Glass is ver. And uh, here I found, I like this word because it includes uh, all of the rules that we just uh, talked about. Uh, you can see here the e, the e has turned to e because it is followed by two consonants, so in this case two s. The e here is an e because the word is finished by a l at the end. And here the e is uh, not pronounced because it's the end of the word. So uh, this thing professionnel is really an example of all these different rules regarding Next, <laughs> a three forms uh, of e which turns into a e. the uh, e accent grave, uh, so it's the same type of accent as in uh, a that we saw earlier, except that here it alters the sound of e, it turns it into a e. This is also a with an accent circumflex. And just like with A, it indicates that uh, there was a consonant after the E, which uh, has disappeared. And it's just an indication to show that the consonant disappeared. And this E, the E tréma, when you have a double point, is a tréma, uh, indicates that it is part of a diphthong and that it should be operated independently from the previous voyal. Not with E. Mer. It's also the same uh, sound as a uh, C, but here mer is a mother. Mer. And since we saw the mother, why not sing father? Père. Père is a father. Now, this is the example. Uh, Shall you see the E uh, with the accent circumflex indicates that the uh, letter has disappeared. You can see the word forêt, uh, which used to be called in the past forest, but we don't say this anymore. Uh, nobody says uh, forest uh, anymore. So we say forêt, and you can see the S, which was here, has disappeared and has become an E accent circumflex. And E uh, tréma to finish here uh, for nom propre. Noël, you can see the E is operated independently from the O. Noël. Uh, this means Christmas. No. Noel. Christmas. No. There's another form of E that we're going to see here. E. -I. Uh, it's very simple. It, it sounds exactly like a E. And it sounds exactly like A E that we saw when we studied A. Uh, so here's a neige. Beige and Rain. So see, beige, um, neige means snow. That's always something quite pleasant when it's uh, winter time. Snow, neige. Beige is a color uh, like uh, my pullover. This is a beige color. <laughs> beige. And Rain uh, means. Queen. We will see this, uh, we'll talk about this word a bit later. Not now, but uh, later is something I will mention when we see another variant of uh, oh. Oh. Then we will see the uh, most famous uh, variant of uh, E. 
uh, this is a, uh, a variant which has even made its way uh, to English language when uh, we see uh, a few words uh, coming from the French which made it into English language like a café for example uh, there it is café masculine it's café but it also, also means uh, coffee café next is été été means summer été uh, étage étage is a floor étage and uh, last uh, bébé which is uh, what's here Alan ici il est le bébé bébé là voilà ben <laughs> bébé oh, there bébé oui. so let's say these uh, words one more time café été étage bébé all right Non, ne touche pas à ça. Next variant sounds also like a e, but it's uh, it's um, well, it's a bit complicated. That's simple at the same time. It's very common, but you need to master this. Er sounds like e when it is located at the end of a word. For example, uh, this masculine noun here, um, boucher, uh, which means a butcher or manger uh, which means to eat boucher manger um very often um you will find a like this e -R, e at the end of verbs and uh, this is an indication that the verb is a first group verb there are three groups of verbs uh first group second group and third group uh, and they all have different uh uh, endings and uh, every time you find a verb of the first group it will finish like this e -R. E. now this is a sound that we have seen already with a uh, this sounds like un. un it's exactly the same as un with uh, a e n but here it's e -I -N. un as a Adjective to start with, plein. But you see, the feminine form of plein is not uh, plein with e, no, it's plein. And this is why uh, I said we would talk about ren before. You see the same e, e, n here. So every time uh, you find the. the uh, every time un uh, is located uh, at the end of a word and that there, it is followed by a e, uh, like uh, here. Uh, oh, that's not the correct one. Uh, like here, plein. Uh, then uh, the un is reversed to a e. So this is why you have plein here and plein here. Another example for uh, here you have a tendre. So you have a e at the end of the word, but it is not directly followed by the e. So that's why it's a un here. Tendre. It means uh, to dye, like if you want to dye your hair. Tendre. And then one more time. Plein. Plein. Tendre. Another sound that we saw before uh, with A, and this time it's with E. En. En. It has uh, two spelling. Um, actually, I forgot to write it last time uh, when we saw it with an A. Uh, so en e n, but also e m and en a n and a m at the same time. Uh, the m you have a m. The m replaces the n every time it is followed by a b or a p. It's quite rare, uh, but uh, it is something that you have to keep in mind uh, when you encounter these situations. Uh, let's practice. Encore. Encore. It means again, encore, oui, encore, <laughs> vent, vent, vent means wind, and know this, I mean, keep in mind the last letter is not pronounced, vent, a word that is 
It's very similar in English. Uh, encourager. Uh, encourager means to encourage. And you see it's a first group verb because it finishes with it here. Encourager. And last one of the list here. Enfant. I, I like this word because it features both forms of en. You have en with e and en with a. It's exactly the same sound. Enfant. And you see uh, the T at the end again is not pronounced. So always remember that in French you have 90% chances that the last letter would not be pronounced. Ah, now another variant. There, I told you there would be many of them. E. This sounds uh, like the regular E. But not always. Sometimes it sounds like e, uh, and sometimes it is toned down like e. Uh. So you have the choice. Sometimes it's e, uh, sometimes it's e. Uh. Now I have, I have made, I've tried to make some research about uh, why sometimes it is e uh, and sometimes it is e, uh, and it is apparently an evolution of uh, language. So only experience will tell you if uh, you have to say e uh, or e. Uh. Not exactly. Uh, the same. Uh, for example, here you have peur, peur, which means fear, peur, and here's an adverb, mieux. So you have eu and eu, but uh, this sounds e, peur, and this sounds e, mieux. There's an adjective right here, heureux, heureux, so e, heureux. Heureuse, it means happy. Heureux or heureuse. It's uh, happy in French. And uh, you can see here, it's exactly the same as here. But here you have E for heureuse, but here this is heure. Heure. Heure means hour, like uh, an hour. What's the, like, uh, you know, 1 p.m.? An hour. Peur. Let's say these words one more time. Peur. Mieux. Heureux. Heureuse. Heure. All right. Next. A three-letter sound. Yes, uh, this is uh, one of the beauty of French, is making things uh, complicated out of simple things. Uh, this is pronounced O. Oh. I have me. I have heard many uh, English speakers say the uh, O, uh, but uh, or U or O, uh, but it's O. Oh. Simple. It's, it's it's exactly the same sound as this, A U O that we saw before, or the letter O. Exactly the same. Uh, it's even a word, like here, O. Uh, it's a feminine noun which means water. O. There's an adjective here, beau. Uh, means uh, pretty, beautiful, or handsome. And if you have it in feminine, it's different. It's uh, belle. It means the same. It's pretty, handsome, beautiful. But for masculine, beau. And for feminine, belle. You can see it's an E because there are two consonants after the E. Why it's turned into an E. Bell. And if you uh, go to a museum, for example in France, uh, then uh, you will want to see some tableau. Tableau uh, means uh, mm, painting. But it also means a board if you go to school and you have to write something on the board. Uh, it's also the tableau. Let's say these uh, words one more time. Beau, belle, O. I don't think it can be any simpler. O. Tableau. Tableau. Okay? Right. Uh, then we have uh, two more variants. Uh, they're quite simple, actually. Um, they're not really uh, actually yes for this one. And, yeah, they are actually uh, they are more rare. Uh, 
uh, in French. Uh, uh, X. So E always becomes a E when it is uh, uh, followed by an X or X in French. Like uh, this verb exécuter. Exécuter means to execute somebody or an order. A word which exists in English as well. Uh, exemple. Uh, you can see the uh, en here has a M because it's followed by a P. Uh, exemple. And uh, this is also a, a French word which made it into English. Excellent. Excellent. And you can see the T is not pronounced, otherwise it would make excellent. But here we are speaking French, so we say excellent. And because it's an adjective, it has a feminine form. Excellent. And here the T is pronounced because there's a E after. Exécuté. Exemple. Excellent. Excellent. The last one. The last one sounds like E. Again, yes. And it's a rare form uh, of uh, E. You only find it at the second person of plural in, in verbs. Uh, so we will see that when we do the verbs in, in, a, in an upcoming lesson. Uh, but it exists in a, in a few uh, regular uh, French words. Uh, now this uh, noun here, it's a masculine noun, uh, which is quite strange, as you can see. But it's very important uh, in France. Uh, ré de chaussée. <laughs> ré de chaussée. So, ré de chaussée. Ré de chaussée means ground floor. Yes, if you take a French elevator, and if you want to go to the ground floor, do not press 1, uh, because you will actually uh, go to the second floor. Yes, <laughs> that's, that's how it works. In France, it, it, actually, there will be a button, uh, RDC, uh, for rez de chaussée. Né. Né. Né is nose. Né. And there's a preposition, che. Che means uh, at. If you go at somebody's place, uh, it's going to be che. Uh, but it's uh, ez like this in a, in a common in a word that is not a verb. It's, it's quite rare. So let's do these word, these verbs, uh, these these words uh, one last time. Ré de chaussée. Ré de chaussée. We will work with the French air uh, later in another lesson. Ré de chaussée. Né, né, ché. Okay, well, this is it for today. Uh, these are all the variants that you can find with a uh, E. Uh, don't hesitate to, uh, to uh, go back to A if you think that it is uh, necessary. And uh, in the meantime, I'll be uh, preparing the next lesson, which will be the pronunciation of uh, E and uh, its variants. In the meantime, uh, work hard, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!